you know, you, you got to keep pushing, keep contending to get into that place that that healing just flows through your body because God wants to touch you. It's his plan. That's why he sent his son, Jesus, amen, to save us from our sin and deliver us from sickness and disease, amen. That's what it said. He said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities and heals you of all disease. All, everybody say all. all. That's his plan, amen. I love it, that's his plan. So let's just stand upon that today. Amen. If you'll stand with me this morning, we're going to read out of Ephesians. The title of my message today is a question. Where's the temple? So in Ephesians chapter 2, 18 through 22, I'm going to look this way because it's easier for me to read. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together you are his house built on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets and the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of his dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your presence in this place. And I pray that, Lord, that the wisdom and revelation of your word would come alive inside of each one of us today. That, Lord, that we would enter into a deeper place with you because of your word. And, Father God, we would experience your spirit like never before because who you've declared us to be. And we thank you for this time in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. You may be seated. Go ahead and put up that first picture if you would. That is the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. I took that picture from the Mount of Olives when I was there in February. And that is the Dome of the Rock. That is the mosque that the Muslims um, built there. And go to the, go to the next picture. That's Pastor Emil, our Arabic pastor, and myself on the Temple Mount, right in front of the Dome of the Rock. I even went over and laid hands on that building because something has to happen there. At some point, the temple is going to be rebuilt. The temple of God, amen, is going to be rebuilt there. And it's to be built on that mount. And where that is, is where the original temple was. Now, a lot of people will tell you otherwise. Go, go to the next picture. Oh, go back. I'm sorry. But where, where the, this is, it used to be that the eastern gate that Jesus is to come through when he comes back was lined up with the dome where the dome of the rock was. That's where the temple was. But through when you come through the eastern gate, you should be able to see right through into the holies of holies of the temple of the Lord. The holies of holies was where the Ark of the Covenant was kept. And that was representative of the presence of God. Okay, so that's now, but what they did, because Jerusalem has been destroyed many times, and when they tore down the temple there, what they did is they moved the Eastern Gate. They moved it so it does not line up with the Dome of the Rock. 
and they built the Dome of the Rock where the temple was, but they moved the Eastern Gate. And then they took it one step further because it's a Muslim thing. They built a cemetery right in front of the Eastern Gate because they said no good self-respecting Jew would go through that cemetery to go through that Eastern Gate. See, there's been a plan of the devil to stop what God wants to do. But how many of you know it doesn't matter what the devil does? God is going to show himself, amen? God is going to manifest himself. Now, they, they may come out with, because there's that Temple Mount is huge. It is huge. But then they may come out with that they could build the temple in line with the Eastern Gate. We may see that happen, but know this, it's not where it's supposed to be. You may hear other things, other people saying things, you know, that we could, you, we could build it over here or there. Right there, where that dome is, is where the temple is supposed to be. So whatever they do, that's on them. But that's where the temple's supposed to be. Then go to the next slide. Now that is where the cornerstone of the Temple Mount is. Right down there in the bottom. That's the chief cornerstone of the Temple Mount. And they would have a worker go there, somebody religious that would blow the horn. And the blowing of the horn said something in the sense that they knew what that horn meant. And that's where the guy would blow it from at the cornerstone. And when we, we look at where we're to build our walk on the chief cornerstone, and the chief cornerstone is who? You can say it a little louder. Jesus! Jesus. I don't know if this side knows. It's Jesus, okay? <laughs> this side's a little quiet today. Jesus! And so that's, I, I show you all this, you know, and I can't wait because we're going back in March. And um, we already got plane tickets, hotel rooms, and Pastor Emil told me we're doing a conference there too, so in Jerusalem or Bethlehem. So we're going to have an incredible time when we go. And I, I bring all this up today because of the word that I've read to you today. That temple is going to be built one day. But you know, they, they believe that when they build that temple, it's gonna bring the Messiah. So they're not building it too quickly. They're not pushing to get it done yet. I think sometimes people are afraid of Jesus coming of the Messiah coming. Whether it's the fact that they're not ready yet or they're uncertain about what's gonna happen. I, I had somebody tell me one day, I, 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 I just, I haven't given my life to Jesus because I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm not sure about the Holy Spirit because I'm not sure of what will happen. See, and I think that people are a little timid about Jesus coming because we're not sure what it's going to look like. I watched a rapture movie by John Hagee the other day. It's called Jerusalem something. But he did it and it was about a, people wanting to set off nukes in America. They had seven nukes. They called it the seven wonders and... and they, they captured the guys that had the nukes and everything. And, and then all of a sudden, these clouds rolled over and everything just began to shake. And then all of a sudden, you seem like just 
lightning, bolts of lightning just going up, 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 like pods of light going up, 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 up. It was the rapture that happened. And they showed it as pods of light going up. And, and then all of a sudden, clothes started falling down. You know, and clothes were raining down and cars were crashing and helicopters were crashing and, and, and just those pods of light going up, which represents the spirit of those that are born again, amen? And it's just, it's just a beautiful thing because that's what's gonna happen. But we need to be sure about our eternity with Jesus, amen? We need to know what's gonna happen so that we don't have to worry. That you can say, even so, Lord, now come. Even so, Lord, now come. Yeah. Know that God has got you. You got to know that, amen? Now look at this at verse 18. It says, now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us, amen? Because of what Christ has done for us. That's our end, amen? That's how we get there. We have access to the Father through the Holy Spirit, amen? The clearest verse, because it's the Holy Spirit that draws us to him, amen? The Holy Spirit draws us to come to the Lord. In John 6, 44, it says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day. So the Holy Spirit draws us to, to come. The Greek word draw, which means to drag, to drag it. So clearly this draw, it's like a one-sided affair, amen? God does the drawing to salvation. We who are drawn have a passive role in the process. We just gotta show up, amen? There's no doubt that we respond to his drawing of us, but the drawing itself is all on his part. He sends the Holy Spirit to draw us. I remember just sitting right here on the center aisle and the Holy Spirit just fell on me and I started crying. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is happening right now? And the Holy Spirit, I'm calling you today. Today is your day. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he said, listen, if you don't respond today, you won't feel this anymore. This is your last chance. Man, I ran to this altar. The pastor, Pastor Dave, he stood up here and he goes, there's somebody here today. The Lord's telling you this is your last chance. I got up and I ran to that altar. The Holy Spirit was tugging on me so hard. He dragged me, he drugged me to this altar, man. And that was my time to respond. But what happens is a lot of times people, they feel that drawing. They feel like I should go, I should go. I, I just feel it, but they fight it. Like, ah, I, I'm too embarrassed. I, I just don't want people to know. And they don't come. It's just like I just said, come receive Jesus. And if you didn't, and you felt like you should have been here, you need to do it today because you're not gonna feel that all the time. He's not gonna draw, keep drawing you. It'll happen for a time, but God is gonna just let you to your own devices. When you sense the Holy Spirit working in your heart, man, just get up and run to the altar. Don't wait, because he's dragging you to it. That's your time. That's your opportunity to get with God. It's like I said last week, when, when God was moving in worship, it's like, don't just sit there, come to God. Come to God, because if you miss it, you don't know when it's gonna come again. I know I've done, gotten words of knowledge on healing like about the tooth last Sunday, the lady got healed. I've gotten words of knowledge on things and then people will come to me or they'll call me later and they say, hey, pastor, that was me. I was just too embarrassed to respond. Could you pray for me now? You know, I usually do pray for them, but you missed it. 
You, mi you missed what God wanted to do. You know, because when that anointing is there, and let me tell you, there is a, an anointing that comes that God is in it and it's supernatural what he does and that people get healed. I know Mario last week, he hurt his tailbone. Just being in here in the anointing, he's like, I couldn't sit down. He's sitting down, he, he's standing up, he's sitting down, standing up. When you're under that anointing, God can do supernatural things, amen? You gotta, when that anointing is here and his presence is here and he's tugging and he's dragging, the Holy Spirit's dragging you, get down here here that's your time don't wait don't don't not respond because then you'll miss it and then then you won't feel it and then you'll just say huh and you know what the enemy does to you he lulls you asleep you're okay you don't need to go to that altar you don't need to you're all right. And there's people, brother, that have gone to church for years that have never made a, a commitment to the Lord because they've been lulled asleep by the enemy of their soul to say, you're okay. How's that baby doing? Just so you know, Susan had her baby this week. Ten and a half pounds. Yeah. 22 inches long. Big boy. See, but the enemy will, will put you to sleep to try to get you to relax. I'm okay. And you'll come to church for years just being okay. But you never made a commitment to Jesus. You never saw the transformation happen in your life. And, and you're, just, you're just okay. See, even Pharaoh resisted the Lord. Pharaoh resisted the Lord. His heart got what? It got harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. To where he lost his only son. See, don't let your heart get hard. When the Holy Spirit is touching you, respond to the Lord. I was, I was sitting over here. I've been in this church a long, long time. See, I was 14 when my mama brought me. So I'm going to be 62. So almost 50 years. But I was sitting right in this area one time. Holy Spirit fell on me, Mark. And I am just, I am a wreck. I am crying so hard. And the God's just speaking to me. And he goes, now I want you to go lay on the altar. I'm like, what? He goes, I want you to go lay on the altar. And people weren't coming to the altar at that time. So I got out and I went and I laid on the floor right here, right at the bottom of the steps. And I lay here and I just cried and cried and cried. And and as his service was moving on and the pastor was coming to preach, I couldn't get up. I was just like stuck there. So I crawled back. I crawled back to my seat and I just sat there and I cried the whole service. I mean, because when God's really speaking to you, it is overwhelming. But as he spoke to me, I don't want to miss. When he says, go to the altar, I don't care what people think about me. He says, stand on your head. Who cares? Do it. I was in one church in Moreno Valley one night. It was an all black church and I was preaching. And as I was preaching, oh no, during worship, one of the guys I brought with me, he did cartwheels across the front. I'm like, hey, buddy, what are you doing? Lord told me to do it. I'm like, good for you. <laughs> that same guy, we went to go pray for a person that was dead. And as he, he's driving me down there and we're praying, he said, the Lord says... to breathe into her nostrils life. I said, okay, you do it. 
He told you. So we get down there and the, they brought the woman out of the freezer. And she was in her 40s, looked like she was 90. I mean, really rough, disease-ridden life. So as we started praying, he's on one side, I'm on the other, and I'm looking at him. He's looking at me and I, I, I like give him the nod, go in. You know, and he leans over and he puts his mouth on her mouth and he breathes into her. And we st stood back and nothing happened. So he looks at me with a, like a terrified look on his face. And he said, I was supposed to breathe in her nose. I'm gonna go do it right this time. So he leaned over and he blew into her nose. When we stood back and nothing happened, the Lord spoke to me, he goes, I'm not bringing her back. Now, why did God tell him? To test his faith. It was a total step of faith for that young man to step out and do that. And he did it. And, and God wants you to know that when he's telling you, when the Holy Spirit is on you, stop holding back from what God is telling you to do. If he's telling you, raise your hands, come to the altar, get on your face and you start responding. If he's telling you, make a commitment to me tonight, today, now, then do it. Amen. Don't hold back. If he's saying, I want to heal you now, receive it. Amen. Raise your hand, do what it takes, but allow God the spirit of God to manifest himself in you that you be healed amen that you will be that witness let the spirit of God come upon you because he wants to that's what he's telling us and remember when, when you respond to the to the Lord to the Holy Spirit it's on Amen. It's on. It's like, it's on right now. Verse 19, it says, so now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Listen, you're not on the outside looking in when you come to Jesus. Amen. When you, when you get filled with the spirit. Now you're on the inside. Amen. You're on the inside. I remember I was in India and I went to the jungles of India. I was way back in some jungles with some tribal people. And I say tribal people, when they met me at the car, they had spears, they had tall hats on, they had horns, they had spears with rattles on them. And they marched and they pounded their spear on the ground so that the rattles went off. It was a little scary, to be honest with you. I had a friend with me and, and the question came up between us, are they gonna eat us? I mean, we were in the jungle and we marched up into the village praising God. And when we got to the village, they had a feeding program that they fed the children and I have a picture of this, but I don't have it with me today. I'll see if I can find it. But it, it was, the, the little kids were in this hut and there was a big bowl of rice and protein in it. And me and Jerry, the guy that went with me, we handed out, they brought us their plate and we gave them the rice and the protein, all the little kids. But I'll never forget when I looked up, there was a young lady out of that age, like this, looking in. And I'm like, she looks hungry. So yeah, but she's not. I'm like, you better get that girl a plate. Get her in her, man. I got that picture, I'll, I'll get it for you. I'll bring it next Sunday. She's just looking, looking in. She was on the outside looking in. You don't wanna be on the outside looking in. You wanna be on the inside 
taking in everything that God has for you. Amen. You don't want to just be an outsider. You are now an insider. Amen. The Holy Spirit has come to you. You're in the kingdom of God. And what used to seem strange to you and foreign to you is now you're going to get understanding about the kingdom of God and understand what Jesus has done for you. Amen. The, as the Holy Spirit draws us, drags us, tugs us, whatever works. We just got to respond. You know, my mom drug us to church as kids. You know, there was times we wanted to go. See, when I was a kid, we went to Sunday school first. And then we all went to church second. So we were there, I mean, we were there for a while during, on Sundays. And then, you know, my family, we, we went to Jimco and we went shop, grocery shopping for the clan, you know, cause there were six of us. But I remember going to Sunday school, that was great, you know? And, and then when we would come into the sanctuary and the preacher would start preaching, his name was Orrin Duncan. He was a big guy. He could preach, but I could sleep. I'd fall asleep. My mom would be pinching me because I'd start snoring. My mom would be pinching me. This isn't the time to sleep. It's the time to be awake, amen. It's time to receive what the Holy Spirit has for you so that you're not on the outside looking in. So what, what, however you got here, whether somebody drug you or your parents drug you, you know, my mom, I thank God my mom drug me to church. I thank God for that. When I got saved on my own, man, that's all I wanted to do was go to church. But there's another work of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't always save us. His desire is to fill us, to fill us. He, we become his dwelling place. You see, in the, in the Old Testament, they had that Ark of the Covenant. And they put the Ark behind the curtain. Once a year, the priest, the high priest, would go through a purification process. They would slaughter the animals. They'd get the blood that he was gonna take in and put on the mercy seat, which was on the Ark of the Covenant. It was between two cherubim and they put the blood on the mercy seat. But they would tie a rope around one of the legs of the priest. Because even though he went through that purification process, if he had sin in his life, when he went behind that curtain and got into God's presence, he would die. They tied that rope there just in case he fell down because they couldn't just go behind that curtain. They couldn't go back there and get him if he fell down and died in there. They, so they'd use that rope just in case that if he died back there, they could pull him out. That's how they had to do it. It was a once a year thing. But somewhere between 597 and 586 BC, the Ark of the Covenant went missing. The Ark was lost. And the Ark represented the presence of God, but the Ark was taken, it was gone. It's not been there since. Now one man, a guy named Ron Wyatt said he found it under the Temple Mount where Jesus was crucified. That is under there. He found it and he found a substance on the, the top of the ark. The mercy seat, he said, was cracked in half. And there was a substance on it. And they, he scraped that substance off and he took it to the lab and they certified that it only had one chromosome and listen, Blood has two, this one only had one, and that the blood was still alive. It's Jesus' blood. He found it directly under where they crucified Jesus. Now they have not taken that ark out, they have not revealed it. Timing issues to that, they say. 
But when Jesus, when Jesus hung on the cross and his blood was shed, the temple where the ark was supposed to be, the curtain that hit it was ripped in two from the top down to give, give what? To give you and me access to God. Now we have access to God. Can I hear an amen? We can go in, we can go out. We have access to God. It's no longer, you know, and I think one thing is I was praying the other day, when, when that thing came down, what it revealed was that God wasn't there anymore. His presence wasn't there anymore. So you gotta, you gotta stay connected to maintain his presence. You can't just come to church once a week and think, oh, I'm good. You gotta stay connected. I mean, it doesn't mean you're not gonna go to heaven, but you gotta, you gotta stay connected to God, amen? So now we've been given access through the cross of Jesus so that we can be the dwelling place of God. Look at verse, Acts 1, verse 4. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Once, when he was eating with them, Jesus, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, don't leave until you get the gift. Now here's the promise in John chapter 14. And it's titled, Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. And he starts off with, if you love me, obey my commandments. He wants us to be obedient to him. And he says, I'll ask the father, he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. Another helper is another word for it, who will never leave you. Verse 17, he's the Holy Spirit who leads you into all truth. The world, the world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you and will later be in you. See, that is the promise that Jesus gave you. But did you see it? Did you see it? It says, the world can't receive you. The world can't receive the Holy Spirit. They're not looking for him. They don't want it. They don't know what it is. Okay, he's going to be in us. He's in us. And we're going to be the temple where God dwells. Look at your neighbor and say, you're a temple. You're a temple. God's spirit dwells in each one of us that respond to the tugging and the dragging and the calling that the Holy Spirit does to get us saved. Amen? So that... We get it and know, and we are looking for it. In Acts 1, 8, it says, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Everybody say power. power. And you'll be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus wants to empower us so that we'll tell people everywhere we go that we won't be embarrassed about church, we won't be embarrassed about, you know, Jesus, but that we'll be excited to be able to share, hey, this is, this is my God, this is Jesus, this is what he's done for me. He's forgiven me of all my sins. He's healed me of all disease. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And, and people will be like, oh, here comes that Jesus freak again. Yes, amen. Oh, to be so lucky to be called that. Jesus wants to empower us with the Holy Spirit so that he dwells with us so that now we are the temple of God, amen? We are the temple of God, not just in church, but everywhere we go, we are the temple. First Corinthians 3, 16 and 7 says, don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you? God will destroy anyone who destroys this temple for God's temple is holy and you are that temple wow <laughs> isn't that beautiful you are that temple but I love that verse 7 God will destroy anyone who destroys this temple amen 
God will destroy anyone or anything that's coming against this temple. God will destroy it. God will destroy it. God will destroy it. Amen. That's his plan. He's going he's gonna to take care of us. He is taking care of us. Amen. You are that temple. I showed you pics of a place that was built with human hands. But I look out at the temple of God that was built by the spirit of God. That's you. That's you. Amen. You are that spirit filled believer. Now look what it says in, in Acts chapter eight. See in Acts chapter eight, Saul who later becomes Paul, but Saul was going after the Christians that were of the way. They called it the way back then. He was after them and he just, they just stoned Stephen to death because he wouldn't deny Christ. And Paul stood there and he approved. It says in chapter eight, verse one, now Saul was consenting to his death. And at that time, great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout all the regions of Judea, Samaria, except the apostles. So all these the, the Christians are running now. They're afraid. They're going out. But as they're going out, they're telling everybody about Jesus. And so you got this guy, Philip, in verse 5. He went down to the city of Samaria and he preached Jesus to them. And multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. That's what Philip did. He went and he preached and people received Jesus, amen? And then when you go down to verse 14, he says, and when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, two weeks ago, we did water baptism. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so that's what happened in Samaria. Philip preached, they received Jesus. That, that tugging, that dragging that the Holy Spirit does. They committed their lives to the Lord. And now um, Peter and John are sent to lay hands on them to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 17, they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. That's the idea that we receive that empowerment and that we would be stirred by the Holy Spirit to do the things that Jesus did. Because if you go back to John 14, he said that a believer will do the things that Jesus did. That's the idea. That's what we're to do, amen? We're to be empowered with the Holy Spirit to do the things Jesus did. That's the plan, that's the purpose. And that's what God has for us today, to be filled so that we can go and we can do, amen? That we can go and we can lay hands on the sick and they recover. So that you, when, even when you're feeling bad, you can lay hands on yourself and recover. And so today, I'd like you all to stand with me, please. I'd like you to come to the altar today. Just come to the altar. Everybody just come, come on, don't hold back. This is your opportunity, remember. <laughs> Come to the front row if you need to and sit, but just come today. Mario, just put on some music for me, buddy. Yeah. You can come close. It's all right. Come on, close. 
I don't bite. And the Holy Spirit doesn't bite. The Holy Spirit just wants to fill us. The Holy Spirit just wants to rain down on us. So I, I, want, I want to do three things. I'm going to do it the way I do it out in the, the mission field. I want you to repeat a prayer after me. And I know many of you pray in tongues already, but God's going to give you a fresh filling today. Amen. Amen. God's going to give you a fresh filling today. So I'm going to ask you to repeat a prayer after me. Then I'm going to pray for you. And then when I'm done praying, when I'm done praying, we're all going to pray in tongues, okay? We're all going to pray in tongues. Whether you pray in tongues yet or not, today is your day. You're going to pray in the spirit, amen? But listen, you have to move your mouth. You got to speak. God doesn't move your mouth for you. Okay, you got to speak. So don't just stand there with your mouth shut. Have that faith to open your mouth and start to speak. Amen. And so when, I, when I'm done praying, I'll say, everybody pray in the spirit and we'll all start praying in the spirit. It's that simple. You know what? You know why? Because it's God's desire to fill you today. It's God's desire to fill us overflowing today with who he is. So everybody repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father. I thank you for your son, Jesus, that he died for me, that he rose from the dead, and he's sitting at your right hand. Jesus, <laughs> forgive me of my sins. Wash me and cleanse me. Fill me with the promise of the Father. The Holy, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. I, surrender. I surrender. Empower me today. Empower me. Fill me today. Fill me. Release in me today. Me. My heavenly language. Amen. That I may pray to the Father. Pray to the Father. In, the in the Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to pray for you. And then when I'm done, we're all going to just start praying in the spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before you today. Lord, we know it's your will to fill us. Your will for the Holy Spirit to reside in us. That we be the temple of the most high God. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come and that you would fill every person here today. Lord, even as we've just committed our lives to you, Jesus, that you would fill each one of us overflowing and abundantly with the Holy Spirit who was with us, now will be in us. We surrender to you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Shandali, just let it rain. Let it rain, let it rain, let it rain down, Lord. Let it rain down, let it rain down, let it rain down, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit just come. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for hearing the cry of our hearts today. And we ask just for that infilling to come upon the people of God now. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Now just open your mouth and begin to pray in the Spirit. Just begin to speak out. Yeah, let it flow, God. Let it flow, God. Oh, Rambarani 
be so. Come on now. Come on, help me pray. Come on. Yes, Shangara Maggie, Delanda, pray for people. Mario, come on. Yes, Shambara de Barana Basori and Daranidia. Ori Amara de Basso. Yeah, let it flow, God. Let it flow. Let the Holy Spirit just fill us overflowing today. Yeah, hallelujah. Oh, I'm about to be so. Yeah, somebody just fill him, Lord. Heal him, Lord. Heal him too, God. Yeah, do a work in him, God. Yeah. Let it flow from your throne, Father. Empower him today, God. Empower his legs today, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, fill him overflowing with your spirit. Yes, Yeah, somebody need be there. Yeah, yeah. You want this? You want this? Want this? All right, just, just open your mouth and begin to speak. Father, in the name of Jesus, just fill him, yeah. Just fill him, God. Yeah, somebody need it. Oh, the unbodied need be so, the undying kid. Just begin to speak, bro. Oh, the unbodied need be so, the undying need it. Yeah, that's it, man. Just come on. Your papa, but sick it. Oh, the unbodied be so. Yeah, Shandara needed it. Oh, the unbodied needed it. Yeah, just let it rain, God. Oh, the unbodied be so. The unbodied be so. Praise you, Father. Just let it flow, God. Fill them overflowing, Father. Oh, the unbodied be so. Yeah, Shandara needed it. Let it rain on us, Lord. Let it rain on us, Lord. Oh, the unbodied be so. The unbodied be so. Yeah, let it rain, God, let it rain. Oh, the unbodied be so. Yeah, somebody Oh, somebody Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Oh, the unbodied be so. Yeah, shake it Praise you, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Hallelujah. Fill us, Lord. Overpower. Lord, empower, empower, empower. Empower. Empower us, God. Oh, we glorify you, God. We glorify you, God. Yeah. Yeah, praise you, Jesus. Oh, I'm not any be so. Yes, so not a year and no, no, ma. Oh, I'm not any be so. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 ma, and he be so. Yeah, let it rain, Lord. Empower, empower, empower us, Lord. Oh, I'm not any be so. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just begin to thank him for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to just tell you one thing. The devil is a liar. He is a liar, amen? He lies. So when you leave here today, you, you can say, oh, nothing happened, or oh, that wasn't real. I wouldn't do that. You leave here today thanking God, thanking him for filling you, amen? That's the will of God, that you thank him. We all have asked, 
We all came to him today and we all said a prayer to be filled. Believe him today. Believe him today. I'm filled. And if you didn't pray in tongues yet, I say yet, just keep asking him to give it to you. Keep, keep tugging on him. I mean, because it's the Holy Spirit that drags us, tugs us, calls us. Tug on him. And now when you leave, tell somebody. Tell, be a witness. Tell somebody about Jesus. His love for you. Take that opportunity to just tug on them. See, because the Holy Spirit in you, God will use to drag somebody here. God will use you, Chris, to drag somebody here. The Holy Spirit in you will like, go pick that guy up. You bring him to church with you. See, the Holy Spirit will do that and you'll, you'll be going, nah, man, that guy ain't coming to church. He might not come to church ever because he's never been asked. But you ask him, Lillian. You're such a sweet woman of God. I declare that over you. You are a sweet woman of God. You know what, Lillian? You have always been sweet and very kind to me and my family. And, uh, and I see God wants to take that sweetness that you have because it's in you. And God wants to use that because, listen, you're, you're that woman that can ask and people will come because of you. Because they know your integrity. They know who you are. And that you can say, you know what? You need to come to church. It starts at 10 o'clock. And they'll come because of you. I'm, t- I'm telling you right now, be that voice. Be that voice, Chris. Haley, be that voice. Be that voice. Most people don't come to church because nobody invites them. Be that voice. You got friends all around you that are just waiting for somebody to ask them. But we think because of the environment that we're in with them that they won't come. Get them out of that environment and get them to come to Jesus. God wants to move mountains through you. Just invite them. Remember, Chris, it's the Holy Spirit that's going to drag them. The Holy Spirit that's going to tug them. All you got to do is make the invitation. And then just let the Holy Spirit be loosed on them to, to do the dragging. So God, I pray, as we've been here today, and you've come to fill us, to empower us, to be a witness, I pray that the Holy Spirit in us, through us, would bring conviction to people to come to God. Lord, we know that we're in the last days, God, that you desire to come for your church. Let us be like John the Baptist, that voice crying out for souls. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus. Let us have that passion for souls. Birth it in each one of us today, God, that people will come, that people will come because of who you are, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. I got got no announcements except go tell somebody about Jesus. Pray for me around two or three o'clock today when I'm in, in LA praying for that little girl. I believe that God wants to resurrect her, amen? I believe God wants to heal her. And God wants to move through you for signs, wonders, and miracles too, amen? Hey, listen, Wednesday night, We're gonna be praying for families that they would know the hope of his calling. 
you got family members that need to get saved, come on out on Wednesday night. Let's pray. We start at 630. God bless you. Have a great day. There's coffee and cake and pie or whatever, cookies out there. Fellowship with somebody and just bless them in Jesus' name.